You know how are we with that? Yeah, okay. So if you are sitting in the audience right now, it's because you are here for the Art of Warframe panel, which has lots of spoilers. So if you haven't played The Sacrifice, I would suggest you maybe go check out the game show downstairs. There's an awesome game show starting. Um, and if you don't care about spoilers, then here we go. Well, um, we're going to start by introducing who you're looking at up on stage. I'm going to try and turn this way more so I can see you guys. That's cool. I'm on my tippy toes. Um, my name is Rebecca. I will be moderating this panel. I work at Digital Extremes, and I'll let you guys take care of yourselves, starting with closest to me. Hi, I'm Keith. I'm a concept artist. Uh, I've been working on Warframe since day one. Hi guys, I'm Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Don't let it go to his head. Uh, uh, I'm the art director on Warframe. Um, and this is probably the most prepared panel of the day. Um, so thank you for coming. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Matt. Um, one of the art guys on the team uh, doing it. One of the art guys. He's also an art guy. One of the art guys. Stuff and things. So just real quick, I'm going to give you guys a look at our agenda. We're going to talk about the sacrifice right away. Uh, then we're going to talk about some weapons and some characters. And then we should be opening it up to Q&A. I do have a microphone up here. I'm not sure if any of our AV guys can... Um, confirm that that is something we can do, but maybe we'll figure it out when we get there. We got like 45 minutes, so we're good. But uh, let's just go right into, th you, do you, have a, you look like you're going to say something. No, I'm good. I'm cool. Good. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do the sacrifice deep dive, but before we do that, why don't you guys just talk a little bit about how long you've been working on the art for the sacrifice overall, maybe, and just how much it's been different than any other quest we've done, from concepts to environments, just a brief... Um, how long have we been working on the sacrifice? Uh, when did Umbra get created? That was probably, where are we now, 2018, 2014, 2014? Um, we started working on the sacrifice probably phase one about three years ago to a degree. We knew we wanted to do a quest that evolved it, but we kept kind of putting it on the back burner. We got, kind of had to keep shelving it. And then when we got the real concept, we kind of, kind of hit the... Probably about a year ago, we started. Keith and I started talking about uh, the characters that go into it, and that's where once we did the apostasy at Christmas, um, we talked to Keith about helping us out with the Lotus reimagination. So I think Christmas is where really kind of rubber hit the road, and we got kind of started creating visualization to ideas and stuff. So and then poor Matt, the stuff Matt. that he built. I mean, we had Steve. 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 Uh, a, <laughs> he wrote the script. Uh, you know, he kept, we kept changing the scripts. And then poor Matt, all the art that they had to make, they had about a month before ship, two months before ship. Yeah, something like that. It's, it, was, it was a really hot process for, for these guys, and they killed it. They did an amazing job. So that's why you're not going to see a lot of previs um, from the art side, but just kind of a lot of the thought process that went to, you know, how we, how we make Warframe, we kind of just build it on the fly a lot of times. So we have a really great set of artists that he works with that can kind of, we can yell at them, like, this is what we want, and then they have to kind of build build the set, you know, and... After tears, after of course. Tears. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, after tears. Make each other yeah. cry Rocking tears. Well, I think when Umbra, and sort of the mystique about Umbra meant that our weapons team in particular got to make a lot of cool stuff that really has the visual. So we're just going to take a look at a couple pictures here of content you guys already have and know. Um, this is part of the, you know, skin collection we released. Yeah, I don't know, again, sorry to talk about spoilers, um... Lucas, Lucas built and designed these things, but for Umbra, we wanted to give him, it was the first time we gave kind of a real, tangible uh, backstory in a character sense, that you got to see the character before they came a Warframe. Um, so the idea was that he was a Dax before he got uh, turned into the, into the Warframe, and Lucas custom designed these as his, these are like his personal Dax weapons. So that's, that's the idea of him. Warframe. If yes, it exactly, yep. And then we also have, of course, one of the more popular weapons right now. In terms of visuals, I know there's some partners in the crowd that don't like the stats, but <laughs> this is an art panel, so. <laughs> it's not yeah. their fault, okay? It's yeah. not their fault. And again, this is Lucas. Um, we, we really like the idea of Umbra telling the story of a samurai, and he, he, 
he custom designed uh, this, this weapon for Umbra's personal sword. Along with some cool armor, why not? Absolutely, yeah. And again, just to kind of complement that, that samurai theme that went along with him. Yeah. So as you guys know, if you played the quest, there is a lot of sort of like a hospital room moments throughout the quest. And when it comes to Matt's team, they really had to tell the story through the props. So in particular, this prop. Yeah, you know, it, it, like Jeff was saying, we kind of have a story or there's like the high level idea that Steve's got. And we get to a point where it's like, uh, you know, it just keeps getting refined and refined. So we're kind of last minute doing some stuff here and there. And, and sometimes, well, a lot of times it's not last minute, but that room was supposed to be something else entirely. You know, that was a, um, what, are the, what do we call it? Like a find, search and seek type of situation in that room where we're yeah. gonna have multiple objects um, that were kind of related to the quest or related to the story, but you know, not directly related. Um, and then that, so we designed a whole bunch of stuff, including this. I mean, this, this thing here is actually in the quest and part of the progression story, but a whole bunch of props that we designed to fill this room, only to figure out that it wasn't gonna work that way any longer, and we kind of pulled them out. Yes, yeah, so speaking of pulled them out, I don't think we saw the origami in the quest. I really love these yeah. a lot, yeah. These were some, do you think we'll see them one day, Matt? Well, yeah, the cool thing about a lot of this stuff is if we don't use it for the quest, it ends up being, you know, uh, decorati uh, decorations for your operator ship, your landing craft, or, you know, for wherever else. And it probably end up in your dojo space if, at some point. So like, the dojo becomes all the quest props that we yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Maybe. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And the idea of, of these kind of things and the, the other Umbra props you'll see is these were kind of character building props, so they weren't really you know, front, front and center in the storyline, but they were, if you kind of noticed them, they would kind of give you a bit of uh, character sense of who, totally. who Umbra was. Yeah, this is a events. story about a father and his son, really, yep. so. Yeah. And the next prop in particular, do you have any, do you want to make I was gonna say, I mean, yeah, like everyone's been saying, we really approach this one almost like a, like a play, like an old Greek cool. tragedy or something, where we're really fixating on the characters and the drama mm -hmm. and the events in this case. So the world building was serving the kind of plot details more so than usual. And in particular, this next prop, I think everyone wants on their ship. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's some confirmation to do this. Yes. Yeah, th this was one of those things. I mean, this ended up in the quest, but this is one of those objects that we were trying to fill the space. And as Keith was just saying, like we're trying to tell a story, um, you know, a, a little bit about the history of the characters and uh, of the story that's occurring. And you know, working on the quest stuff. It's, it's a, sometimes a little fly by the seat of our pants, but it's honestly the most fun stuff to work on because you are delving deep into that story. Um, you know, doing regular tile sets and coming up with an idea for a new Grenier set or new Corpus set is, is great, but you know, the story is handled pretty lightly there, but when we do this stuff, uh, especially in the last few years that we've been doing the, the kind of story-based quest, it's way more fun, like just to kind of create the story and you know, take ideas that Steve and Jeff have and then try to, you know, put them to 3D is, is pretty awesome. This is my favorite pop prop for that reason because when Steve and I were talking about the character, you know, we kind of thought of him as a warrior kind of artisan and that he might be a musician. And we talked about, we looked at, we did some research and we really liked the sound of the shamsen, the Japanese guitar. And then we talked to Keith Power, uh, our composer who we work with, and he wrote that beautiful, beautiful song yes, that so uses the Duran. shamsen. Yeah. So the idea that, we're, and the kind of storytelling device was, the suggestion was that that was the song that the Umbra character would have played to his son on this, on, the, on this, on this instrument. Skills are coming back. Yeah. Awesome. Now, we, we have one of these in our ship already, if you participated in the teaser site. <laughs> but what was it to, like to design the art for a board game in a game about space ninjas? Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> we want these characters playing chess right now. No, yeah. Okay. I mean, it was a, it's an idea that has been floating around for a long time. I think it was one of the, either one of the prototype things that we had in the game. Uh, I'm not sure. It might have been Steve's idea originally. Um, you know, the tea set on the, on the right? Yeah, that was just, another, again, another one of those props. And then Steve was like, hey, well, we need a Go board because we're going to do this version, Warframe version of Go. And because it was, you know, we're doing stuff quickly and trying to prototype, I took Rosa's drawing of the T set and we adapted it to make the Go board. 
and then adapted it yet again to something that's different than what you see here. A lot of the times for us, concept is the jumping off point. You know, we, we, it's, it's prototype, um, as it is in a lot of situations, but you know, we sometimes take great pains to design something that works on paper, and then we get it to 3D, and it doesn't necessarily work, it doesn't serve the purpose. And, and Steve, flow. it was really cool, like Steve really kind of came up with the concept of, of the board game, and I think it just fit the context of the story so well to be in such a, a, a position of weakness to play against the villain, Ballas, who's in such a position of power. Um, I think it's kind of one of my favorite storytelling components that we've done in the game. Who here Still think we... it should have been a full Go game, though. Yeah. Like two hours long, <laughs> yeah, just exactly. suddenly in the middle of everything. <laughs> Who here are we spoiling right now, just so we can know how Oh, that... I'm so oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. All six of you. You were warned. Yeah. You were warned. Um, and one of the really cool parts of this quest for characterization, too, was getting a war portrait done in a futuristic game. But this is clearly like a Napoleon era portrait. Yeah. 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 This is, this is uh, work by Craig Sellers. Um, that a good number of the concept art team had roles in doing stuff for us. Either it's prop design, like Jelko designed the Shamisen, mm -hmm. uh, Rosa did the tea set. Uh, this is a painting that Craig did. Uh, Steve and I had a conversation and we were like, hey, it'd be cool if we did something like X, Y, or like, well, like a hero portrait, essentially. And then, uh, as always, uh, Craig really excels at doing this type of stuff and he, he loved doing this. He, he wanted to do more of it uh, after this was done. I, so. I'm sure everyone would like more of these to hang up on their <laughs> ship, so it's, yeah. let, let Craig draw. Yeah. And yeah. again, just more, just cool, simple storytelling that's world building. Like this, this is the character, you know, that's the first time we've seen a Warframe before they were a Warframe. We were um, purposeful in kind of obscuring the face because we don't always like to, you know, kind of impose, you know, that decision on, on our players because um, we still like that quality of role playing that Warframe bring, brings. Um, but again, just visualizing one of his victories in battle. I think this building is, the past. This is one of my favorite parts of doing what we do. Like the production art stuff is really great because you have to design individual element, elements, but you know, a, a rendering of a prop is not as, you know, it doesn't in, evoke as much uh, emotion as something like this does. And uh, so doing these type of portraits or doing like high concept, like really rendered stuff is always my personal favorite stuff to work on. Awesome. It just, it's super inspiring. Like. And I think um, you spoke earlier that the room originally looked like something else. So this was sort of the original hospital room. Yeah, and this was this was me kit bashing a bunch of stuff that we have in Everyone the level. Everyone knows what kit bashing means. Yeah, if you don't know what kit yeah. bashing is. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the game is five years old. We have a lot of assets that we built um, for other sets. And what we end up doing a lot of times to prototype an idea is take those pieces and stick them together. You know, we had an idea that this room was to be uh, Oricon uh, in nature, um, and but well, we had a whole bunch of Oricon pieces. And we had ideas for, like Steve had ideas about how he wanted stuff to be presented and the type of things in this space. So to get the prototype rolling really quickly, instead of making a gray box, uh, you know, that's kind of boring and untextured, we tend to just kind of use what we have at hand because we have so much of it to yeah. put together. And, and then you were able to do this. Sorry. Well, and that's the thing, like, yeah. it's really helpful for us to see, like, the fact that they can do that so quick for us and then present it, like, it, it felt too decorative for the, the tone of what the situation was, right. you know, and it kind of led us, like, it led Matt to kind of build this, this space. Yeah, it's a bit more grim here, you know, you have the, it's very grim in this room. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And, and it, 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 it progresses as well. You know, the, the interesting thing, too, is that, you know, the initial kind of kit bash was something that I put together just to kind of inform the idea. And then it goes off to someone else, like uh, Will Macro worked on making this level and, and shipping it. And then, you know, Steve's like, hey, I, I want this. And, you know, there's a lot of back and forth uh, throughout the process. We tend to make a lot of stuff and throw it out because it doesn't work. And, you know, it's sometimes tough to do, you know, emotionally, but, you know. No, it's part of the that's process. the theme of the panel is a high emotion <laughs> art. But, and um, one part of the quest that a lot of people really resonated with was the Vitruvian theme. Obviously, we did a big UI overhaul, and you know, you had some inspirations for it, namely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is uh, again. Uh, so much of what we do is starts with a conversation, and I think that's probably true of every game development yeah. studio. You have a conversation, and then you start thinking about things that you've seen or that inform you, uh, and then it evolves from there. 
so this is based on a conversation that Steve and I had. Uh, I think Jeff was part of that conversation too, and I was like, hey, well, it would be cool if it was this type of thing. And then our Q bros came up with some super awesome stuff. Uh, the Kamiki brothers uh, killed it on this stuff. Yeah. Like, so this was all sort of like the inspiration for that new Vitruvian experience, which just came right. about yeah. iteration after iteration to get all this really yeah. awesome. We've been struggling with reimagining the UI. We've been working on it for about two years, trying to yep. think about what kind of visualization we're going to commit to. And we've always been kind of exploring, you know, Warframe's sense of sci-fi isn't like, you know, kind of like hard future stuff. We, we kind of like to merge the, the traditional with, with the sci-fi elements. And we wanted some kind of traditional elements in the UI infused. And then the, this storyline with the Vitruvian kind of gave a good, a perfect kind of vehicle to kind of explore that stuff. And the Kamiki brothers kind of stepped in and uh, visualized these things for us. And it just worked perfectly. And we do have a little video for some of the work in progress of that. And then to continue on, we're going to do in the Sacrifice deep dive. And we have a few of Keith's drawings from the Sacrifice, which will be quite exciting. But this is um, a really powerful part of the quest. Yeah, th this is, again, an early test. Um, Steve had an idea for, uh, you know, some shader tricks that we, some post-process stuff that we could do. And uh, Jeremy built something for us. We, you know, again, start with an existing level and start pulling pieces away uh, to prove the idea. You know, and this, this worked to really, I mean, it was pretty quick to do. And it worked to really nicely inform what we wanted to do or what we were going to do. Um, but there are problems with it, you know, so we start thinking about the story more and what, uh, you know, what the goals are for that and then start to strip stuff away until it works. Yeah, so you have some series of progress shots. Is this, was this the first iteration of that? This is from that same level that we were just looking at and it just happens to be, you know, cool moments that yes. I thought were pretty neat to capture. Um, this one uh, was, I don't know, there's just something uh, like, this, this is affected me kind of emotionally, I think. I don't know if it was the, how late at night it was or what the case was, but I looked at this and was like, wow, this, is, this feels really cool. Like, there's a magic to this shot here and the fact that the operator was there. It has absolutely nothing to do with the quest except that, you know, it's the landscape well, and it's the character, but it, it really felt like uh, emotionally connected to And that. I think that's, that's a good example of kind of what it's like to work in art in game development where there's like, you kind of struggle and you struggle and you struggle and you throw so much stuff out as you're saying and then sometimes you just kind of have this aha moment where you create something and you kind of it's such a it's such a relief and you kind of get excited about you know kind of finally capturing it and then committing to it and in context this is all because of a very long-armed character named Valis. <laughs> what's with the long arm keith yeah we'll find out i guess <laughs> i guess we will but he has like a little like pocket watch aka the vitruvian mm -hmm. so these were some ideas we had for that yeah, these are sketches that uh, Jelko did for us, and we had this idea where uh, Ballas would wear the Vitruvian as a personal computer device or a pocket watch on his wrist. You know, him being Orican, you know, we're trying to make stuff look ornamental, and obviously if you've seen what uh, Ballas looks like, you know, there, there is some uh, Renaissance quality to him, some, some uh, like, decorative elements to him, so uh, we designed this. Uh, to do that. Yeah. We ended up not using it in yeah. this style yeah. because it just didn't fit the needs any longer. But, but I think coming up with this backstory like kind of was a, a, a cool way to kind of help kind of create the idea and, and the visual idea of the Vitruvian. And yeah. it's just kind of like, what's the most obnoxious personal computer we can make? For, yep. for, and last for year's Hoking. TennoCon, <laughs> Keith had the privilege of showing a first look at Ballas, yeah. and a year has passed, and now he might be the most loved or hated character in Warframe. As long as he sticks around for a little bit longer. Yeah, he's pretty cool, so we'll see, won't we? But um, the next slide is when things get a little very spoilery. Keith, this is a piece you did, and you guys are going to have to give a ton of... You have no idea what's coming up. You're just like, what could it be? So who's this? Oh, that's Lotus. Yeah. And I didn't expect you to show this one, because yeah. we've kind of seen something else. Oh. And so now this is kind of revealing that there's... I think with the Lotus, there was something where the whole game, you're wondering what's under the mask. You know, what's the, what's the kind of the person under the mask? And she sort of, the reveal kind of goes the other way. She's less warm than you might have expected or hoped and a little bit more divine 
and kind of worrisome in that way. And you're not really sure what your relationship with her is like anymore. Especially if you see her like this. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, that's the big reveal and sacrifice. And that's the big, the big figure that she has. So, how long have you been working on this particular, because you guys worked on the quest this year and you've been yeah. kind of working on that. So in this case, you know, how did you approach this particular ask? Did you know the context at the time or what was the... I don't think he really did. This is... My, this is, I love, I love this design, and, and part of the reason why I love it so much is because it, it kind of made me nervous to do it. Um, you know, when, when I talked to Keith originally about bringing kind of, so those who are, I'm, I'm assuming most people know the lore, but the idea is Lotus is a sentient who took the form of Margulis, who was Ballas' human love, um, that she's kind of like this dual character. So when she leaves us in the apostasy um, and takes her sentient form, there's still she isn't completely able to abandon the Margulis aspect of her character. And when I first kind of talked him through it, when he, when he gave us this, I was not expecting to see her face, especially her eyes. And I got really kind of nervous about like, do we show her eyes? Because we never showed her eyes before. But the thing I, I really loved about it was that this is the least human she's ever looked. And I, I love the contrast of giving her probably the most human quality you can in that state by giving her her eyes. And then even with how we render the eyes when she opens them, they're anything but human quality looking, you know. So I thought, I thought it was just brilliant how he was able to give her, her this, this quality of humanity, but pushing her more into a monster than she's ever been. I just, I just love it. I think, it's, I think it's perfect. I hope to get a bit of sort of tenderness um, and a gentle sense, but then also awe-inspiring and, and slightly distant, slightly hard to reach at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's quite something. I couldn't believe it when I saw it in the, the original picture and then seeing it in game. It's just, oh lord. There's something about, I feel, it's weird, I feel really proud of the sacrifice and a little guilty as well because, you know, the cliffhanger, there's a lot of emotional reaction yeah. to the cliffhanger. Um, and I think it's, but we don't take it for granted that there's a bit of a, an emotional attachment to this character. You know, like we definitely cherish that and we think it's a very important part of Warframe and I hope you guys trust that we're treating her with a lot of respect and we have a lot of plans. So I'm gonna make it's weird because no one said that to me, so. No, we just, to me. I just, that's probably the meanest to you about it. <laughs> so. It's cool. It's cool. Rebecca's always been the villain, guys, always. It's true. <laughs> That's why I am so good with weapons, segue. So we're just gonna go through some of our weapons here, some unreleased, and uh, some of you might not have farmed this yet, yes or no? Who's farmed it? <laughs> I haven't, Whoa, so that's a lot. there you go. Wow. But yeah, this was, um, the weapons team did a great job with, actually I think I see the concept artist for this in the audience, but. Where, where? I see him. I see the concept artist for this weapon in the audience. I'm making, yes, yeah, so if you wanna say hi, you can. Hi, Jelko. Oh, there's Jelko. <laughs> Good oh. job, Jelko. I don't know if Mike's here, but the sculptor as well is somewhere, maybe. He's here because he's doing an Ortis workshop. He? Yeah. But yeah, so we have he's some here. cool prime weapons, as you guys know, and maybe an unreleased one. Oh. 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 Yeah, I got a good gram ribbon, so I'm happy. I had no idea you were showing that. No I'm idea. I'm the villain, Jeff. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> All right. Yeah. What kind of Warframe would carry a weapon like that, Rebecca? Uh, oh, you want me to go that far into it? We don't have anything to show for that, though. So. We don't have anything to show for that. Yeah, but I don't want to drag in this on. Too no, long, you didn't. So, <laughs> uh, that was well, well done. Well done. But. Um, <laughs> As you guys know, past dev streams, we've shown some um, concepts for some deluxe skins coming, and oh. we also have deluxe weapons coming, so who could this be for? Mm. They're fantastic. I think you guys can probably just go silent at this point. We'll just go through this. Yeah. <laughs> These are so good. And just... then, oh, who would have this? Yep. And I think we showed this one on a dev stream already. Yep. This was our... Our new axe entry, because God of War was cool, and we have axes too. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And uh, oh, I, I bet if we had an Eidolon themed Warframe, they'd use a shotgun like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just this enjoy is, it, guys. Like, Kaz, Kaz killed it with this. 
she's, I, mean, I think it was her idea. She's like, I want to kind of do a sentient shotgun. And I was like, well, let's, let's see what you do. And then she killed it. This turned out amazing. So that's going to yeah. be super fun. And I guess if you want to look a little more like su such an unreleased Revenant toy frame. Yep, this is from Revenant inspired. And you know, if you're here, you like Corpus, some pretty cool new Corpus weapons. Yeah, Enrico killed it with these. These are beautiful. And it's been a long time since we released a glaive weapon, so... Yeah, Corpus Glaive. <laughs> there you go. People like to throw discs. Cool. They do. Yeah, it's right. fun. Yeah. So that was just a really quick weapons deep dive, because I know we're actually running a bit behind in time. Are we? Okay. We have a lot to go through, so... Our next... We'll start with characters. Are you showing any concepts first, or are you just going to the meshes? Concepts first. Oh, wow. I have an order here, guys. Wild, okay. If you guys have been playing Warframe for a while, following on Twitter, you might know some of the art community gets really involved. And one artist was particularly inspired by Ballas and the Lotus. This was Stepion. He is mm -hmm. a comic artist. He did the cover of the first Warframe. And we asked him, I guess if you want to tell the story. Uh, it was actually, I think it was Dave who reached out to him and just said, because he'd, he'd done some fan art on his Twitter. And it was getting lots of, like, the, our subreddit was picking it up. Uh, so we just reached out. Wasn't it you that reached out to him? Yeah. Or it was you, yeah, yeah. You asked him if he'd do... I don't know how, he, how this Warframe came up. But, but we have a new <laughs> deluxe skin for Nyx. <laughs> so, so that's coming soon. So if you're a Nyx player, we'll be getting a new uh, deluxe. This is, like, I guess, one of our first series of designer deluxe skins in some way, because he's, he's an amazing artist, amazing guy. He writes his own stories, and he does yeah. a lot of art for Top Cow and stuff, so you should yeah. in DC. Check him out if you can. Um, so that's going to be cool. That's very cool. And we have another deluxe skin concept. We do? Yep. Do we? And it's for Limbo. Oh, yeah. So I think the next two, I really love these next two because uh, this is Kaz, and I think the next one you're going to show is Nikita's. Kaz is, a, is an artist on the staff, and Nikita is as well, but they both started out as community artists, yep. doing Tenogen, um, and now they work for us. It's like, the, it's the best story. And these guys, they just understand the aesthetics so well, and Kaz pitched, she said she wanted to do a Limbo skin that was Senti inspired, and I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing one. And next, we also, if you're like me and you love Titania. So this is Nikita's, yeah. So this is a beautiful skin for our little pixie. It's more moth than butterfly, but <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, Nikita also, like you said, is a Tenogen artist yep. that we took on um, full time. Yeah, and just doing amazing work for us. And another character we have, this is a screenshot of our Oh yeah. Book. <laughs> yeah, this and is Eric's concept and Greg kind of crammed this out this week to get it ready and it just it turned out amazing. He added a rear shot too. He added the back shot, yep. So That's the it. view we see as players, so yep. it's important to show you just the backs of our Warframes. Yep, it's important. Now our next concept came from the community, as you might recall. Yes. yes. So we showed this a while ago. This is Liger, who does incredible work. Um, and the mesh kind of got putting delayed because Skyers, who was working on the mesh, got kind of pulled on to other things. Um, so he was able to kind of get the high poly ready, though, so we can kind of show the progress on the mesh. And if you know the Ned Flanders meme, feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> You'll know where that comes in. But so, yeah, so yeah, this one's so going to be super complicated. It's for... very, yeah, it's very detailed. It's a beautiful design. And, yeah, but it's, it's in a really good spot now. Yes. Yep. It's gonna, and you can run around making your fire as you would with Neja, so it's good. Yep. Good times if Skyers is here, I don't know, somewhere maybe. He's probably, actually, he's volunteering, so I see Steve, though. Hey, Steve, why don't you come on up? Oh, sneaky. Steve's watching, because he probably <laughs> wants to take a look at this deluxe skin. So, yeah, this, this design. And... Uh, again, another Liger, a Liger design. Uh, Samuel, who is the artist, Samuel. is Samuel here? I don't know if Samuel's here. Where is he? You see him? Yeah, we see him. When we get oh, to there he is, so yes. Samuel. So he's, he... We love you, Samuel. Just wait, just wait. <laughs> he, uh, when he saw the design for this, he first, he's like, can I, can I have it? Can I have it? 
So, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna see what he did with it, and it's. But he felt that maybe there should also be a companion skin. That's right. So he showed me. Sam had showed me a, a design he had done for a Kubro skin, kind of like probably about four or five months ago, before before the Liger design. And then when he saw the Liger design, he kind of pitched, well, maybe maybe Nidus needs a, a needs a pet doggo to go along with it. And we love the idea. And yeah, so. So let's take a look at the first of four screenshots because this skin is so complicated. We have our armored and unarmored form. Now, of course, we have our new companions. So this mm -hmm. is the first screenshot. Ooh. And then if you're so, Nidus... Well, before you do that, the, so the, the, the visual design of Nidus is that as his powers stack, his armor kind of opens and progresses. So the next render you see is kind of the final state of how his armor stacks onto him as he builds. It's just... As you get your stacks generated, yeah. you get quite, uh, yeah. quite armored up. It's just, it turned out amazing. And that should also obviously apply to our new companion. <laughs> And uh, huh, maybe he should get just as cool looking. You, you roll, Samuel. Yeah, very cool, Samuel. So his the armor is uh, is an ar it's an armor attachment set for the Kubo. Oh, he doesn't get to stack, bro. He, he doesn't really stack as his powers go, but it is a cool attachment set that you can put on. So that is incredible, and it's that's incredible. sort of our deluxe deep dive. And as you guys know, um, we are working on the Revenant Eidolon Warframe, which we'll get to later, because Keith concepted it. But Keith also had a concept for another Warframe that Pablo's designing that we sent to Kevin Glint, who is an artist in the community. You guys might know Kevin. Um, he does lots of good work. We show him a lot. And we wanted to give you guys a first look at our second Warframe in development, because we are doing two. Um, and this is codename Garuda. And uh, she means business. I know, Pablo's not here to like tell I us know, the design. I know, poor Pablo, we're stealing, we... we're stealing Pablo's thunder. That's uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it, um, it's based on a concept that Keith did for us, which is here, which is beautiful. Uh, and Pablo, again, came running over when he saw the, he kind of, he went sneaking through my concept directory yep. and uh, picked this out and he came running over for a, a Warframe pitch that he wanted to use this for. And, we had to make some modifications to it because the design is amazing, but it has a bit of familiarity to Zephyr. Uh, so Ray, uh, our lead character artist, kind of redesigned the helmet, and we kind of made modifications to the, the bits that come off the arm to kind of turn them into cloth to kind of go along with it. But I don't know if there's anything you want to talk about with the idea behind the concept. I mean, obviously, there's a, the mythological connection, as with the code name. Um, so it's got this avian you know, creature feel. Uh, and as always with these things, sometimes I explore stuff and I wasn't sure if they were going to be sort of bird talon gauntlets um, and if that was going to relate to either a new weapon type or, uh, or possibly part of the, uh, the actual Warframe. Um, so it's, it's stuff like that's always kind of up in the air at the beginning of these processes. Mm -hmm. So you'll have an idea for like, the, the raptor claws here. You're like, okay, could be weapon or... Exactly. Put it in the One of the frame. abilities, you know, they unfurl, do something different, you know, so it sort of depends. Are they detachable or not? Are they integral? I don't want to steal Pablo's thunder, and I'm sorry, but one of his uh, design ideas was that she would be almost like a higher vampirist. So now we have <laughs> two vampire-themed Warframes coming at the same time, which is pretty cool. Told you Rebecca's the villain. I'm not. He said that, not me. But, but um, basically what you're seeing here... Uh, the fundamental theme of this Warframe is gore. So every one of her abilities, everything is built around the idea of basically enemy meat shields and gore yeah. and claws and harpy and tearing. So it's very visceral and Pablo will absolutely uh, kill me for saying that, but. No, I think he'll be happy that you said that. And then and again, we just wanted to make sure it didn't cross paths with uh, Valkyrie too much in the presentation of yeah. that kind of quality to it. So she's a bit more elegant rather than rage. Yes, and yeah. you guys know Valkyr has her claws and rage. Exactly, that yeah. was the really important distinction. Yeah. Um, but this Eidolon Warframe piece. Oh, I love this. So this was something you did sort of, I guess, a year ago. While working on the Eidolon. And yes. then I sort of went, oh, I got to keep going with some of this. What if it was, you know, integrated into some Warframe elements? So obviously when you were doing the Eidolons and everything, when you wanted to do this Warframe, how did you feel it would fit in our world with, like, 
it's tricky because we're still figuring out how they worked as well. So it's one of those things where everything kind of coexists. Um, and you also want to weaponize other people's ability, like other factions will weaponize secrets from other factions. So there's always kind of an opening in that sense. Um, and I feel the ten are always, you know, unlocking darker and darker arts to use on their end. Yes, the dark, yeah, it's true. The ten are getting darker and darker <laughs> in what they've learned and are uncovering about themselves. So through this frame in particular, um, yeah, I, it's stunning. And you obviously did a weapon in this case where you knew it would be its own weapon, or did you think it could be part of the powers too, or how do you... This, this definitely looks independent. Yeah. So it would be one of those things that could be shared around. That's the fun thing with working with Keith. Like, you know, he did this... He's, he's really just really great to collaborate with because he provides even so many ideas you don't ask for. So, you know, he was helping us out with Eidolon, designing Eidolons, and he's in that wheelhouse, and he just kicked us a bunch of Warframe designs, and this came along with it. But whenever he gives us Warframe designs, there's always weapons included with it that, you know, there's loads of his, his weapon designs are in the, in the game. Actually, you also did Ballas' sword that we never actually released in the quest, even though we said we would, Jeff. What's that all about? Uh... We have, I didn't say, did I say that quest or a quest? That's actually a good question, I don't know. Technically, <laughs> there's plans, there's plans. Okay. There's plans. Now, I'm going to say this, and I, this isn't a segue, this is not the next thing that's happening, but Jeff, the Prime trailers. Oh. I just want to know, and I figure you... you... <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I think we need to be honest that we're probably not doing them anymore for quite some time because they just take, like, is that true? Uh, I don't, I, I feel sad committing to that truth. Um, on, honestly, the, the Hydroid is really, it's, it's almost done. It's almost done. If someone would write some lines for it, we could Where's probably Where's the pineapple make that. hat? He, he he's, will. he's gone now. Oh. Um, Zephyr, Zephyr is really far along. And then sacrifice, just with the delays and sacrifice, we had to kind of pull all animation resources onto sacrifice. And then all of a sudden, we're shipping Limbo. It just kind of even snuck up on me. So I really hope, I really hope we'll ship the two that we have in the process. And then if we can find the window to kind of continue doing this. Yeah, it's hard, yeah. I know. Sorry it's, even, it's fun, but it's even just a fun exercise for the animation team. You know, yep. it's... It's just a really good kind of outlet for them creatively to kind of well, do that kind of stuff. Well, we have the voice actor for Ballas here at the studio. So we could yep. do a live action one, like, if we wanted to. <laughs> Save true. some time. It's true. Could yeah, be good. I think it's a good idea. And just to remind everyone that we are indeed working on the second Warframe, I'm just going to show you a screenshot. You guys know Revenant, and he is indeed still a sort of un... Not un... I don't about? know. What do you call him now, Rev? I don't know. What should I call him, Keith? You can name him. Revenant. I, I like Revenant. Like, Revenant. We're going to call him Revenant. I like Revenant. Revenant. Do you ever sometimes think that you get to name our Warframes too just by calling the concept stuff? I, I always give it my best shot. So <laughs> my fingers crossed that it works for everyone. <laughs> We're going to stick with Revenant. So, confirmed. But yeah, he is getting a bit of a power tweak just to be more laser focused because the Eidolons in particular, obviously their way to engage in combat is to come up at night. Well, you kind of live demoed him on that dev stream. We, haven't, we hadn't really had to see, seen him in action except for when you kind of demoed him and that kind yes. of gave a lot of feedback. And yeah, so we'll be doing that work. next dev stream. It's not today, sorry. But um, we do have one picture here, which is uh, possibly a new Sentinel coming. Yeah, it is. This and might be related to what you see later. Yeah, this yeah. evening at 6 o'clock. <laughs> so this is um, one of the fun bits of getting back to Corpus Aesthetics. Yep. And I think, again, this is Kaz. I'm pretty sure who designed and built this. And, then, and if you want yeah. to give Kaz some love, they're the one in the Alad V costume. Yeah, if, you, if you see an Alad V wandering around, yes. that is Kaz. Alad V cloak, yep. everything. Yep. So that's Alad V. And, of course, I have a microphone here, and I would love to open... Actually, the microphone's in the middle of the floor there. If anyone wants to ask questions to our artists, or if you guys have any sort of you know, last Warframe art things you want to say. I'd love to get uh, about 15 minutes of questions in. Yeah, sure. That's that always good. a good way to get our yeah. live attendees a chance to talk to you guys, which is a good, a good thing. So we'll go right to Q&A. All right. And just if you could say your name before you ask your question and make sure you get nice and close to the mic, that would be awesome. All right. The name is uh, Swat Omega. And the question is... Uh, Generation 1 dojo tile sets. What happened? Why the switch from the old tile sets to the new ones? Are you referring to like the very first sets that we did? The very first sets. Yeah. Um, well, the very first sets were 
I mean, they were fantastic. They looked great. Um, and then we just kind of decided to move things in a different direction. But, um, you know, it, it comes down to taste, I guess, at the time. And there's no real underlying reason to do it. Um, just was an evolution of, of the sets. You prefer the early stuff? I would like to see, like, a um, maybe a legacy edition, like a legacy revamp. Have you seen the stuff that we did recently for the dojos? Uh, not too recently. No, I would really recommend you check it out again because uh, in the last update, the dojo has got a, a pretty big update. Um, but legacy sets a great idea. Uh, we do have big plans going forward for what we're doing with the dojos. Um, they've been admittedly left and forgotten for quite some time. So take a look again. I think you'll like what you see. Um, a lot of the flexibility and the customization that you have in your uh, landing craft or your Lisette has worked its way into the dojos even more so. so yeah. Who here has a, a dragon in their dojo? Has anyone built a dragon in their dojo, one of those cool statues? <laughs> yeah, see, see? There's some pretty amazing stuff coming back. Like with the updates that we did, like people were being really creative before and then we released a whole bunch of new content and I'm blown away. Like at least once or twice a week, I'm seeing something that just blows my mind that somebody was able to build. It's, it's super awesome. Uh, thanks, Swat. Hey, my name is Eric. In-game name is Iscaria. Um, for a while now, and you teased this a while back, where are our pet moas? <laughs> where are they? Stay tuned. Like, <laughs> oh. stay tuned. Like, don't go anywhere. At 6 p.m. in particular. Don't go anywhere today. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hey guys, my name's Mark. I got two quick questions and then maybe like, it's kind of a request a little bit, but uh, first part is syndicates. We haven't done anything in a while. Like we've gotten um, augments and everything, but have you guys thought about maybe doing another round of syndicate weapons? Oh yeah, I don't know. There, there has been talk of that. Um, we should. We should, we definitely should. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just one of those things where sometimes the games, we just keep building the game and we kind of keep forgetting about like if you're, get started. If you're uh, checking the box, it's like each syndicate has a melee, primary, and secondary. Yeah. So like you're technically done, but obviously people want to spend their standing on... Absolutely. Another thing too yeah. would be like Zaw parts to go for the syndicates as well because yeah. it'd be something where you could have like a syndicate design Zaw that's like aesthetically and maybe have the proc with it as well or something. Yeah, that's a cool idea. You're hired. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> I appreciate it. It hit me off the road. I travel for a living. So, um, second question. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember it, but with uh, with Venus, you're obviously going to be doing something in relation with maybe primary or secondary weapons. I mean, I know you guys are keeping it tight lipped, but with planes, could we potentially also see some of that backfit, for example? Like maybe something like a weapon type that might be more aesthetic for planes, like maybe bows or something? We actually, we, when we ship planes, we were talking about ver that very thing about maybe a, a, like what would kind of fit the Ostrons as a, as a projectile yeah. weapon. And we, we did bring up bows. So <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's definitely a, like, I think a very real possibility that we'll go back when we yeah. have a moment and kind of implement that, that very thing. And then my little type of request was, I mean, with the no clip uh, documentary you guys did, we, uh, we found it. I'm a big Unreal Tournament fan from back in the day. Cool. So when I heard Steve was responsible for the, the sniper rifle change, yeah. like we've got like the link gun, kind of like the Amprix, but we don't have the lightning gun sniper rifle where you could zap a guy from a mile away. So <laughs> it'd be something cool to see too. I think you might have to ask Steve. Yeah. Look, for that, look for that pineapple. I'll, I'll see if I can find him yeah. later. But anyhow, thanks, guys. Thanks. Hello. Hi. We saw Hi. you this morning. <laughs> uh, I'm Ken. My in-game name is Ken Sock. Um, are you ever going to finish the Hydroid Prime trailer? Oh, I'm just getting Ooh. trolled. Hydroid Prime trailer. Just Twice in one Twice in a panel. panel. <laughs> the, it's almost done, according to Jeff. So. It's going to my tombstone, I think. Yeah, it's only... Yeah. <laughs> Hydroid Prime when? <laughs> Who do I have to throw money at to get it done? <laughs> Pardon? Sorry. Who do I have to throw money at to get it done? No. <laughs> it's, he he well, responds better to crying. That's true, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Okay. We're very close. We're working on it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hello. My name is Jacob. Uh, In-game name is Lord Forlorn. Um, a quick question. Are Tenogen creators allowed to make armor? 
Are they allowed to make armor? Yeah. That's a great question. So Tenogen, as you guys know, you can make helmet skins, cyanidas, weapon skins, and uh, landing craft things. But armor yeah. is one that we're actually, we haven't done yet. We haven't done yet. We're, they, the, the, the crew that kind of organizes Tenogen, they keep, um, like Tyler keeps, you know, kind of nudging in like new, new uh, content for them to kind of have, have access to. I think right now we're talking about even the potential of operator. Yes, uh, so that's actually being stuff. announced today at the Tenogen panel. So, so yeah. Spoiler so. from Tenocon. <laughs> we are opening up what they can do, not in armor specifically, but you yep. will see, like Justin. But it's definitely, I think, yeah, we want to give them as many avenues to creating content for us as possible, so. Yeah. Okay, just one more question. Are there any plans to add maybe cosmetic exclusive end game items? Sorry, can you just get a bit closer to the mic? Okay, um, end game cosmetics hard to get, they show prestige. Earnable cosmetics. Remember the EP in conversations where it's like, let them earn it. I know. That's, that's Scott. We'll make yeah. the content. Yeah, that's a, that's a design <laughs> panel. But I'm sure this team would make it if they could. So. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. Hi. Hello. My name is Thomas. Uh, I'd like to know, uh, since you just revealed a second skin deluxe for Nyx, do you plan on doing second deluxe skin for every frame? We've been talking about that, actually. I think we're, we're hitting a point where we'll probably do like another, another cycle. Another the round, frames. right. Yeah, and even, like, I'm biased. I really love Excalibur. He's the OG, and he never really got a deluxe skin. He kind of got his, his um, what's it called, the proto skin. Yeah. Proto skin, right. So, yeah, yeah, we're definitely kind of hitting that point now where we're starting to think about the second gen of deluxe skins. Fine, thank you. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, yeah, I'm, I'm Black Diamond Ace. Um, I have a few questions, two ones. Uh, will the sitar be playable on the orbiter? We have definitely considered that. We've had that conversation. I mean, it wants to be played, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, we have the, the taiko drums, and I think, well, I know when we were doing the concept and I talked to George about it, he was pretty keen to create something for that, so I would say it's probably gonna happen at some point. Will uh, Great Prime be invaulted anytime soon? Great Prime is a bit of a legend, and we dare not speak its name at <laughs> such an open forum as this. Uh, you never know who's watching. All right. Uh, can we get Syndicate Noggles? Noggles? <laughs> Dan Dahl, if you're listening. Yeah. Or Drew, both of our Noggle kings. I'm sure they can do it. And will Bose finally be able to fish for us? I just like to shoot into the water and pull out the fish. Maybe. Not any, not any plans in the works yet for that. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There is some extra syndicate content coming for the orbiter. Uh, What's that? So we have the customization stuff. Where's Jelko? There's Jelko over there again. <laughs> Jelko has been doing some customizable uh, wall skins for us that'll go. You know, you can earn so them and. I can make a red veil den to live you out sure my can. edge lore. Mm. Yep. Hello. Hi, I'm Elena. Um, I have two things. One, can we please with... Uh, Sorry, can you get just a tiny bit closer to the mic? Sorry. With Tenno customization, can we please have eyebrows and eyelashes be separate from the rest of our hair? I like white hair, but I don't like white eyelashes. It makes me uncomfortable. Please. We are, we are doing, like, we're planning to uh, go back and revisit the faces and kind of, yes, open up the like better customization options with all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, I really love Tenobet. It's really pretty. And one of the examples given on the translation sheet is Hayden Tenno written in a pretty flower. Why was that on the bed sheets in the hospital room in the sacrifice? Was Matt. that just a, was that a Mike Lethem Easter egg or was it? No, that was just, you know what? Just because it's nice. <laughs> Hayden Tenno confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Sorry. Hey. Hey, Nintendo confirmed as a Warframe. Hey. 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 Thank you. Good eye, though. Yeah, thanks. All right, we have time for three more questions. I'm sorry. And then we got to start setting up for the next panel. Hi, I'm uh, Josh X15 Leon for Gamertech. You guys ever consider doing, um, like, accessory changes for Orbiters? Like, the designs you have, it's there, but it's there. Like, you can't change it to match the color scheme of your ship. Or your order, excuse me. Right. Oh. Sorry, I, I didn't hear the first part of your question. Accessories if, for your If orbiter. we can change accessory colors to match orbiter design. Yeah, so the 
ability to customize your uh, landing craft is was an afterthought for us. So there is some early stage stuff that we did that doesn't fit into that system. As we create new, we're going back and kind of revisiting some of that stuff. So uh, if it doesn't work, then it will work uh, sometime in the near future, I would imagine. Everything that we do that is that is you know, for you in your dojo and your landing craft and the operator ship now is all going to fit within that construct because we've realized how much fun it is to do. You know, people love doing it. And, you know, if anyone has the opportunity to see Rebecca's Lisette at some point, you can see the wild and crazy stuff that gets done there. What do you have against my noggles, Matt? How many noggles? 140. 140 noggles. Like, many gifted from people here. It's pretty awesome. On that note, too, is there any more for, like, expansions of Ayatans? Because I have about 120 lying around my ship, we, and I designed some myself just for fun. There's an unreleased Ayatan at one of the Cetus vendors. It's a sculpture yeah, that's not in the game yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It's sitting right on his desk, right in front of the mining, and it's, it we looks amazing. I'd love it, to eh? have it. We'll have to release it. We should. You know what? Those are so much fun to do. Um, like, they're, they're just statues, you know, but the kinetic motion in those things. And uh, I know talking to uh, Dan and Jelko, those are the two guys that have designed the majority yeah. of those things. They're super fun to do because, you know, you're, you're, you, it's, it's part uh, art and part puzzle, you yeah. know? So it's really cool. Awesome. awesome. So, Thank yeah, I, I would anticipate us doing more for sure. Thank you. Awesome. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Colton, Zim Game in Game. Um, I was just wondering, um, when you're designing a Warframe, uh, do you ever feel like outdone by the community when they repaint it and redesign it with all the parts you have available? <laughs> I I I love it. I think it's like I never thought five years ago we'd be making a game where the players contribute so much aesthetically to the growth of the game, even. Not even just like the Tenogen aspect, where we have players putting content into the game. Just seeing how much fashion frame is a is a component to to people's playing of the game is it, it just I, I don't know I love it. It doesn't yeah I think it's amazing. All right. I think it's one of the most awesome things to see people kind of take your ideas and plus them. You know, yeah. like we don't ever purport to have all of the answers or have the best ideas, but we have some and we get the opportunity to make them. But see the community contribute in their own way is pretty. It's pretty rewarding. Like, I, we were talking earlier about seeing people's dojos. I get a total buzz out of seeing the cool work that people in the community do. Like, it, it's fantastic. It's so awesome. We have time for one more question, and then we got to give our guys a round of applause. So All right, let's take it. Doom, amazing I, game. Uh, awesome yeah. shirt. Uh, so I'm Dave. Uh, in game is Stripe. Uh, I've been around since the founders. I've got an XCal Prime and everything. And it has been beautiful watching you guys evolve this game so much. My question is, how, with all the like Asian themes and the probably thousands of weapons now, how come we don't have a Kanabo yet? Why don't we have a Kanabo? What's, What's a, a Kanabo? Kanabo? It's, uh, it's basically <laughs> like the giant studded club that's uh, oh, wielded Pete, by Onis. Pete. Oh, hey, uh, yeah, you know what? I have been... I have something rolling around with an, like an Oni type theme, oh, yes. you know, frame yeah. or something. But the thing is, is do we want that with the Tenno, or maybe the Oni themes could come up with someone else? I mean, that could definitely go with the Grenier vibe, right? True. So it's sort well, of I, that I is like, floating I, I'm around. I'm a Rhino man. I would love to be running around with a gigantic nail bat. <laughs> totally. That's where I'm going. Totally. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is basically a, an assignment now. You'll have to make a giant, sweet club on weapon. It. I love, I love the whole thing. I love clubs. You know, things like that. <laughs> They're understated. That's the thing. They're not yep. super flashy. You know what I mean? So they tend to kind of get put to the wayside, but when you get to actually use them and see them, they're so cool. That's oh, awesome. Yes. So clubs confirmed. Uh, we're going to give a huge round of applause to our three amazing panelists. Oh, Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Every year, you guys come, and it's just so amazing to be in your presence as you guys bring us the artistic wonderful i'm just too awkward to talk but it's so <laughs> awesome you guys are amazing thank you for coming again i know you traveled to get here keith and you're awesome we love your work jeff matt you guys are killer and everyone on the de art team who's contributed you guys are amazing the team is amazing yeah, yes so, so if you. you see anyone uh, with a gold developer badge maybe there's someone that contributed to this panel so say hi in five minutes we're going to start our sound panel so uh stay seated if you want to watch that otherwise uh 
There's game shows happening and there's tons to do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone.